He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues. So just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity. These things aren't political. They're biblical. God's word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, good Sunday to you. I am Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Very happy to be with you today. And we've got a great, great uh, program for you today, talking about nurturing our new nature. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. We're going to talk more about that. To help us talk about that with me, as always, is Jake Porter. He is the Assistant Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, it's always a blessing to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're, uh, we're continuing in, going verse by verse chapter by chapter, 1 Timothy. Uh, today we're in 1 Timothy chapter 4 for those that are tuning in and want to listen along, and we do encourage that. You know, we want people to become very, very biblically literate in a society that's becoming functionally illiterate. You know, it's so important for us to dig in, read God's Word, know God's Word, and that is something you and I endeavor to do on a weekly basis with everybody. Uh, we, we're talking about, like I said, that nurturing the new nature and this is an important topic for all Christians. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's important, you know, understand that you don't have that new nature until you become that new creation that you mentioned. You right. know, so understanding that that's a prerequisite to this new nature. But when you understand you have this new nature in Christ, uh, there's a whole lot that goes into developing that new nature and pouring right. into that new nature and nurturing it like you're talking about. Right. You bring up a good point. You know, a lot of people, I hear them going, oh, I'm a spiritual person. I go, are you a born-again Christian? No, you know, I just kind of do my own thing. I'm just a spiritual person. It's like, well, actually, uh, what the Bible teaches us is that you're spiritually dead, and you, you need to be born into the Spirit. You need to be born, again, that part of you that can be spiritual, it's spiritually dead. Right. So you're going to need to to be born again, have God's Spirit in you before you actually become spiritual. So to talk about this, we did preach a message on this. We're going to listen to a portion of that message, and then we're going to come back, talk more about nurturing this new nature. So take a listen to this. Today, as we continue on in First Timothy 4, I want to talk about nurturing this new nature that you and I have. Because if you're here today and you are in Christ, according to the book of Corinthians— if a person is in Christ, in other words, uh, you know, Christ is the vine, you are the branch, you are in Jesus, you are bringing from him all that you need. You, you have his strength, his courage, his wisdom, his love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, self-control. First Corinthians, or sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 5 tells us that that kind of a person who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And if you are anything like me, and I know that many of you are, you had a point in time where whether or not you were raised in a Christian home, which I was raised in a Christian home, but I, I like many of you, rebelled against all that was good and wholesome, uh, rebelled against my parents, rebelled against the Lord, but I still was raised up in a godly home. But there came a point in my, my life where I had fallen so far down that I was flat on my back. I hit uh, the, you know, the proverbial rock bottom, you know, where you're laying, you're just, you're laying on your back. You got nowhere to look but up to God. And you get to that point where you, you know that there is no way, you're, you're not happy in your sin. You're, you know, sin is pleasurable, let's face it, for a season. And when the season's over, it's, it's miserable. And you're like, I just, I want out of this. I want, I'm done. And you come to the point where you realize you can't fix this on your own. You can't change. The only way things are going to get fixed is if you submit yourself to God, submit yourself to his will, let him take over, let him be God in your life instead of you trying to be God. And when you do that, God does a transformation. He does this work where the old things have passed away as embarrassing as they may be, as horrific as and as much trauma as it may have caused you, as much harm and damage as it may done on relationships, those things have passed. And behold, all things have become new. And you're a new creation, a new creature in Christ. And you have a new nature that has been placed in you. Before, you had a 
nature of flesh. Well, now you have a new nature placed in you. This thing was birthed. This is called the spiritual nature. And from that day forward, you still have your flesh. We're still all living in these things called flesh, but now there's this new nature in us, and that nature needs to be nurtured. We need, we need to diminish the old nature because, it, like I said, they're at that war, right? Paul said, the things I know I should be doing, I'm not doing. The things I know I shouldn't do, I'm doing that. There's a struggle, this battle, and we have to fight against it. So we have to nurture the new nature within us. And as we do that, what we're going to find is that it's a very deliberate action on our part. In fact, we see in Ephesians chapter 4, when Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus, he said, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. You got to throw it off. When you, when you throw something aside, it's, it, you're saying this, this is no longer valuable. Throw it aside, throw it away, right? And, and then you're doing that in your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. So there's something in us now that knows this, that that old nature has been corrupted. So what do we do instead? We let the spirit renew our thoughts and attitudes, and we put on our new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So every single day when we wake up as a believer in Jesus with this new nature, there is a very conscious, very deliberate action on our part to say, you know what? I'm putting this new nature on today. When I go out into life, I am going to go out with this desire for holiness, righteousness, truth. I'm, I'm going to put on this nature and say, Lord, not my will, but but your will be done. Nurture in me what you have placed in me. You've already birthed this new nature. I'm born again. This nature is there, but Lord, nurture it now. Do something with it. Cause it to grow. Cause it to become powerful. Cause it to, to be effective. And Lord, let me just put that, that other, the old stuff, let me just throw that away. Let me put this new one on. God, nurture it. Do something in my life today that I might be holy, that I might be truly righteous. That is what we as believers do. So we have to nurture what's already there as a believer. Yeah, we got to nurture it. And, and I really want to speak, if I, if I could right now, to our audience that are men, that, that are husbands, that are fathers. The Bible says you are the spiritual leader of your home. You are the priest of your home. And, and I say that because the context of 1 Timothy 4 is uh, very clear. Uh, this is Paul talking to young Timothy. Timothy is a young pastor. He's a spiritual leader in the church. And this book is meant to instruct pastors on how pastors are to behave and how pastors are to ensure the nature of the church is nourished. And you know, we could read this and go, okay, well, I'm not a pastor, so this doesn't apply to me. Not true. If you are if you are a man who is a husband and a father, you are the priest, you are the pastor of your home. And then of course, as a family, you you're part of a of a larger congregation of believers, and that larger congregation may have a pastor, but in your home, you're the priest of your home. So this spiritual um, leadership is so important, and we can pull these these principles, apply them to home, and our families will do well for that. And and one of the first things that I want us to see in First Timothy four verse twelve is that when we we nurture this new nature, we have to recognize the spiritual authority that we have as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. It says in verse twelve, "No, no one despise your youth, but." Be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. And I love that this is a 412 verse because, of course, we are pastors at 412 Church, and this is one of our 412 verses, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, me being involved in youth, this is always one of those ones that youth groups always want to use, you know, let yeah. no one despise you because of your youth. Right. Obviously, there's some context we need to understand there. Sure. But, you know, it can be taken in that way, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a principle there for sure. And um, and you can apply it to the youth. But really, when you look at the context here uh, and, and over and over again, if people have been tuning into this radio program, we've been calling, we've been referring to Timothy as young Timothy. Right. He's a young man. Um, but really, he's not he's not all that young. He's just a few years younger than Jesus was when he died on the cross. So Jesus was 33 when he died. 
at this point, Timothy is 30. And not only is he 30, but he, and referred to as young, but, but we know in the context, like you say, uh, the context of him being young is because Paul's writing this, Paul's about 70. Right. So yeah, to, to Paul, Timothy, he's a, young guy. he's a young guy, you know, here we are today, you're 30 years old. Yeah. And so you're the same age as, as Paul is. And, and, um, and I would even say, yeah, you're a young man and I'm, and I'm not that old myself, but you're a young man, you know, and you, you've got a young family and, and God is doing some incredible things in you. And, and I would tell you the same thing Paul says, don't let anybody despise you for your youth. I mean, you're young, but the, the idea here is if you live in such a way where you're an example to people in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, all the things that are said here in verse 12 of chapter four, um, your age really won't matter. And, and I see that, you know, there's, there are times where I'm not at church. And so you fill in at the pulpit and I have, I have people that are in their seventies go, man, that guy did such a good job. Pastor Jake is doing amazing. You know, it's a matter of how are you living your life? Yeah. yeah and absolutely. that's a great message that you have for, for the young ones in, in our youth ministry as well. How are you being an example for right. others in these things? Right. Yeah. I think we can think about youth almost as a maturity level rather than an age. Right. You know, cause you could be, you could find somebody that's 30 years old and act like they're 16 and yeah, you would say that, you know, you could, that's an immature individual and right. you know, they could do a lot of maturing, but you know, somebody that is a believer that conducts themselves in, in that word and conduct and in, in spirit and love and faith and purity and all of those things, this could even be a, actually a young junior high or high school kid that's conducting themselves in a way where it's like, man, look how mature right. like that kid is. Right. You know, and, and so there's, and, and there's some authority, there's some power in that. Right. right. You know, and, and we have to understand that we are ambassadors for Jesus. In other words, we represent Jesus. According to Second Corinthians 5, verse 20 through 21, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he, uh, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What a great responsibility we have as believers to represent Jesus here on earth. And, and it frustrates me to no end right now to see people claiming to represent Jesus, and yet their attitude is Jesus is tolerant. Jesus is accepting. You can live in a sinful lifestyle, and Jesus doesn't care because he loves everybody equally and wants inclusivity. Right. And really, when you look at at Christianity, Christianity is not inclusive. It is exclusive because Christianity is for those who are willing to set their life down, set their life aside, lay themselves down and put God first in their life and, and obey Jesus. And not everybody's willing to do that. So every, everybody's welcome to be included, but they have to put themselves down. They right. have to die to themselves. Only the people willing to die to themselves are going to be able to to get into the true church of God. Yeah. Well, there's a standard, right? We right. think about the the word, the conduct, the love, the spirit, the the faith, the purity. They all of those have a standard. Right. And what's happening and what you're talking about is, you know, there's people that have lowered that standard. Right. Okay, yeah, Jesus accepts everybody and you can continue in what you're doing. And that's not quite it. Yeah, Jesus right. is a, is acceptive of everybody, like you said. Right. But there's a standard that needs to be met. And when that's not met, when you're reckless in your, your word, your conduct, your love, your spirit, and all of those things, and, and you think that Jesus is just tolerant of it all and he's, he's going to allow all of those things to continue, well, that presents a problem there. It, it presents a false gospel is right. what it presents. And, you know, Jesus was not tolerant of sin. You know, we saw multiple times where he healed people. He said, go and sin no more. He even told one person, stop sinning or something worse is going to happen to you. Right. You know, and that, that is, um, that is how God, God was, God is not, was not, and will not be tolerant of sin. And when the church agrees to tolerate sin, what happens, and we've seen this in our culture right now, we have tolerated sin. We've been told you just need to be tolerant. So we're tolerant. And then once they can get you to be tolerant of it, then they push you to accept it. They want you to accept the sinful lifestyle as a normal way of life. And once you, you move from tolerance to acceptance, they're not going to stop there. And we see they haven't stopped there. Then they push you to celebrate it. Right. And that's where we're at now, where we are being pushed to celebrate sin. And it, that's happening all around us. So we need to 
We need to rightly represent Jesus while we're here on earth. We have much more to talk about this topic of nurturing this new nature. We're going to take a quick break, listen to a word from our sponsor. We will be right back after this. We are in a free speech war. With big tech, Biden is going after independent news that doesn't lockstep with them on COVID, shots, adverse effects, and early treatments. If you value Valley News' award-winning, unbiased journalism and community coverage without a left slant, please support us by going to myvalleynews.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for $5 a month. We can do this. Welcome back to Our Watch. I am Tim Thompson. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. We're both pastors over at 412 Church in Temecula Valley, and we are talking about nurturing our new nature. If you are in Christ, you're a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And as we find that all things have become new, another thing that's important to us is creating new healthy habits. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, into doctrine. And one of the things I love is is going back to the original language and knowing how to rightly understand what we're reading here. Because it says, give attention to these things. When I hear, and I think most of us, when we hear give attention, it's like, oh yeah, pay some attention, you know, direct your thoughts towards it. But really, when you go to the original Greek word here that is translated give attention, the the idea it carries with it is become addicted to. And I I, I think of a person who is addicted to heroin. What do they give their attention to? Heroin, heroin, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what they give their attention to. They're addicted to it. So when you know, and, and they think when they wake up, what's the first thing they think about? How can I get more? Who can I rip off to get more? What what item do I have that I can sell that I can get more? Who? What relationship can I can I damage so I can get more? I mean, every everything in there thought process everything in their life is how can i get that and that that is the idea that is with that original language is is not just well just pay some attention no it's envelop all that you are in this because it's something you have to have right you know you think about somebody that has that type of addiction and when they don't have it there's a a almost like an illness like they feel sick they they're upset and it it does not make them feel well you know you think about here he says to to basically be obsessive and addicted to reading to a proper exhortation of the scriptures to the doctrine when when you live your life where you're uh, addicted or paying that much attention to the word of god and your relationship with christ and pouring into those things when you lack that one day or one morning you feel ill Right. It's like, man, I, I, I cannot wait until I can get back to read the scriptures right. or, you know, you've got that same or a similar type of feeling when there's that lack of right. that day. Right. And I, and I want to stress something very important for our, our readers, even people that are tuning in to, to, a, to a radio program, right? They, they're listening to this and I appreciate they're tuning in, but don't ever let this radio program be a substitute for your own reading of God's word. Right. Don't let anything be a substitute for God's word. Um, you know, I, I've actually heard people say, oh, if, if you don't like reading the Bible, just watch Chosen because that's the same thing. And I'm like, no, it, it is not the same thing. You know, Chosen is, is man's creation and Chosen is flawed because it's not the word of God. It, you know, and, and let's face it, there's been even people on the set of Chosen pushing the LGBT Q plus I A whatever acronym they want to use. There's people on the set flying the the gay flag, pushing that agenda, saying it's their right on the set of a movie that's supposed to be glorifying Jesus, and it's their right their right to push that type of lifestyle. Um, they're on set, so there's a spirit about the set there that that isn't right. So, and that's not I'm not trying to rip on shows. And all I'm saying is don't ever let anything be the substitute for reading God's word. Right. So important that we create those new habits. 21 days to create a habit. There's 21 chapters in John. Read a chapter a day. Create a new habit. Study God's word. Know God's word. Give all your attention to it. Another thing is we need to put our gifts into service. Like it says in verse 14, do not neglect the gift that is in in you, uh, which was given to you by the prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Yeah. I mean, what good is a gift if we do nothing with it? Right. God's gifted you to do something. And what good is it if you know what that gifting is and say, okay, I understand, but I'm not going to put it into service. Right. That doesn't do any good. 
No, I mean, the, the, there are a diversity of gifts. We read that in uh, 1 right. Corinthians 12. A diversity of gifts, um, same spirit that gives it. And we know God gives gifting, and, and I'm not talking about talents. I'm talking about the gifting to be able to do something that apart from God you cannot do. Right, right. And um, if, you know, he, he distributes as he sees fit. And what is it for? It says that it's for the profit of all. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's... Um, the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. If we don't use it, what what does the church profit? Right. You know, we we need to to use it. And really, it is to those who have spiritual gifting, it is sin to not use it. We see the parable of the talents. You know, God gave a, a measurement of wealth to each person. Two did something with it, gained. One person hit it, did nothing with it. He says, "You wicked and lazy servant." Right. I don't want that for any of our listeners. I want them out there using the gifts God has given them. Another thing with this new nature, if we're going to nurture the nature, we have to fully embrace it. We just have to go with it, not compartmentalize our Christianity. Oh, I'll be a Christian at church on Sunday and at home, but when I go to work, I'm not allowed to be a Christian there. It's like nonsense. Fully embrace it. Let it be a part of who you are. It says in verse 15, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident. To all, yeah, not a worldly meditation, not right. a empty your mind right. and and um, yeah, yeah, yeah not, none of not that. that nonsense. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's meditating, it's taking in the scriptures, and then you know, you then you take it in again, and you right. take it in again. You're trying to draw anything out from right. it that you believe that God is trying to, or, or that that God is showing that He's trying to say to you, right? And then you give yourself entirely to it, right? Yeah, you just keep bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up, and and when you think you've gotten everything you can out of that that text, bring it up again. Yeah. You know, and I know Find this, more. I, there are things that I have read in God's word 20 years ago and I, and I got something out of it then. And there, now I'll reread that today, 20 years later, and I'm getting something totally different out of it. Right. And there's so much in God's word. There's so much we can learn. There's so much we can apply to, to say, Oh, well, I'm not going to go through. I've had people go, Oh, well, you're studying the book of Matthew. I'm not going to show up. I've already done that study. Like what? Like, study it again. And when you've studied it again, study it again. Like, you can study the book of Matthew, just one book, the rest of your life, and never fully get it. So just keep digging in. Let God speak to you. And and just just give yourself over to it yeah, completely, you know, and, and really let it be a part of who you are. Last thing I want our listeners to know is that we need to take time for introspection. I think this is one of the most important parts of this whole talk today is taking time time to look at yourself and and this is exactly what it says in verse 16 take heed to yourself and to the doctrine continue in them for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you and you know i i get a lot and you i'm sure you get a lot we get a lot of people saying hey what you you're so concerned about what's happening in our culture so concerned what's happening in our school district or uh, you know in our our movies, you're so concerned about what's happening in the culture, why don't you just worry about yourself? And there's truth to that. We as believers need to take time for introspection. We need to remember what God has saved us from and to whom he has saved us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think one way to think about it is sin always looks way better on other people. And sometimes I think you way worse get- on other people. Or yeah, way yeah, worse. Way right? worse. Yeah. I'm sorry. Way yeah. worse. Yeah, my sin looks worse on you. Yeah, right. yeah. Where it's we want to point out things on other people. Right. But then sometimes we get caught up where it's like, okay, I, I, I'm not focused on my own sin. Right. Not that you need to make everything about you, right. but you, there is, you need to focus on yourself you a little to, bit. You need to know where, where God needs to work on you. Right. You know, and I, I use the illustration of, of oxygen masks falling down. You're in an airplane. Hey, if this cabin loses pressure, oxygen mask is going to fall down. Put the mask on your own face first before you try to help the person next to you. You know, it, it, that, that, that is the case. Deal with yourself first. But the whole idea is you wouldn't deal with yourself first and then just sit there and look at the person next to you and go, oh, you're going to die. Right. Sucks to be you. Like, <laughs> no, you put it on first, then you help the person next to you. That is an act of love, and that is all the time we have for today. Pastor Jake, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, and I want to thank you all for tuning in to Our Watch. Again, I'm Tim Thompson. Love bringing the Word of God into your life. We'll see you next week right here, Our Watch with Tim Thompson. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you are encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. 
Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.